And uh, in this talk, uh, Martin and Juanabundo will talk about Cordell and talk about explanation. Okay, thanks for introducing me. Uh, so this will be really like two half an hour talks. I mean, we synchronize with the content, so Pranamendo will be going to use some of the things I'm going to say here. But for the first half an hour, I'll be talking about quarter graphs, and then Pranamendo will be talking about uh, interval graphs. Okay, so let us get started. Just to be on the same page, let us discuss what a quarter graph is. A quarter graph, I mean, is a graph without a hole. A hole is an induced cycle of length at least four. So these are holes of like four, six, this is nine, I believe, up there. So you cannot have an induced sub an induced subgraph being a cycle longer than a triangle, I mean cordless cycle. And uh, you can think of it, I mean, so we don't have these holes, but this is only s partially useful to think of the chordal graphs as the graph with some forbidden structures like holes, it's much more useful to think of them, or I found it much more useful to think of them in a positive way, namely think of this as a click of tree, a tree of clicks. Yeah? So you have got like a graph, Gra you can say that, I mean, you can prove that the graph is chordal if and only if it has a tree decomposition where every back is a click. So you or even stronger, you can take the family of all maximal clicks of this graph and you can assemble a tree decomposition out of this family of maximal clicks. This, there's linear number of maximal clicks and you can assemble a tree decomposition out of it. And we call it usually in this literature, it's called a click tree. I mean, this tree decomposition where the bugs are exactly the maximal clicks of the graph. Okay, uh, there's also another characterization which may, you may find useful, we won't use it really in this talk, is that uh, graph is chordal if and only if every mini inclusion-wise minimal separator is a click. There's no non-click minimal separators. Okay, so this is like the chordal graphs, and what we are going to think about, or what problem we are going to focus on, is the problem of like deleting the least amount of vertices to get a chordal graph. So this is like a graph modification problem when your standard uh, motivation is that you have got some data from some experiment or some data coming from here and the theory model says that this data should be a quarter graph for some reasons but your data is somewhat like messy there are some errors up there so it's usually always a quarter graph and we model it like being a quarter graph plus a few vertices and what you want you want to detect these few vertices so that you hide them delete them treat them as errors as outliers and to work on the remaining quarter graph so your goal is to delete k vertices so that the rest is chordal and this motivation gives you like this motivation gives you uh, k as the natural parameter because you expect that the number of errors number of outliers is really small okay so this is the classic graph modification problems with the motivation i just told you and there actually it's non-trivial to get an algorithm i mean if you think of graph modification problems in many cases you get this forbidden subgraphs being with constant size and then the stupid branching like the simplest branching possible like branch on a find the forbidden structure and branch how to destroy it in a finite number of ways is a good branching algorithm. But here, for quarter vertex deletion, I mean, these holes can be arbitrarily large. It's actually quite non-trivial to get even an FPT algorithm parameterized by K. There's a paper by Hixin and Daniel uh, from a few years back. This is the date of the algorithmica. I mean, it was a few years, er a few years earlier up there. But, <laughs> yeah. But why do we care about this actual problem, quarter graphs, whatever? So, let me share some experience. So I worked a few years ago quite a lot in this like quarter interval, unit interval and similar graph classes. And I found them that really satisfactory on the tier level or on the combinatorics level. So we found a number of positive results in the graph classes like FPT algorithm, kernel, sub-exponential algorithms for some completion problems. And there's a lot of papers up there and most of these results are positive. There is an algorithm, there's a tractability result, there's a kernel or something like that. But on the other hand, all of these results were really involved. All of these results required developing new techniques, new understanding and new combinatoric tools to cope with these graph classes to get there. So most of these works were really satisfactory on the like combinatorics level, on like theory level, graph theory level and that somehow seduced me a few years back to this area. Okay, so uh, let's review this quarter vertex edition. So the algorithm of Cow and Marx worked uh, in time roughly k factorial up there in front and some polynomial factor which I don't want to analyze here and what I'm 
mostly telling you about, but I really don't want to tell you about. I will give you some flavor of the arguments there. I won't really even start to speak about like the details of the kernelization algorithm. Is that there's a polynomial kernel parameterized by k, and we did one with part, and there was also a second paper that gave a better bounce uh, by mostly the neighborhood of Bergen crowds up there. Okay, and what's also important, what I want to sell to you is that the important part of this kernel, so the important part of understanding corner vertex addition was also understanding the approximation things, how to approximate. Because previously there was not really any approximation algorithm and it was important for the, even for the kernel to understand the approximability of this problem. And what we developed in the last few years uh, was also like how to make a poly optimum or poly logarithmic, like poly log n or poly k approximation algorithm there. We had one in our paper with bars. There was also another paper in, in the other kernelization paper. But later there was a paper by uh, Kim and Kwon uh, from 2018 that proved the erdos poja property. I will tell about it later during the talk. But you know, the punchline after all these talks is that you can, if there's a solution of size k, you can find in polynomial time one of size either k square log k or k log square n, depending on your needs, what you do prefer up there. Okay, and so that's like the final status of this line of work. And what's important here, which I want to, well, I will say more later during the talk, but now just to highlight, uh, Kim and Kwon uh, in 2018 showed that the corridor, the holes have the erdos poja property. That means that in any graph, you, unless you have got k plus one vertex disjoint holes, which proves that the solution is to be of size more than k. If there are no k plus one disjoint holes, then you can find a solution of size k square log k. There always exists. So there's like a dichotomy with a slack. Yeah? I mean, in the mean max flow mean cut, you have got like the exact flow versus cut. Here you have got a mean max theorem with a slack. Either you have got a lot of disjoint holes or you have got a small heating set. Okay, I would, yes. So we'll discuss it in a moment. Okay, and what I want to show you, so now I, what I want to show you is instead of discussing the details of polynomial kernel, which has got a lot of tedious tricks and a lot of like marking and complicated reasonings, and it's quite like technically involved, I want to focus more on, on actually the approximation part a bit. Because first it gives a flavor of the type of arguments, of the type of structure you're really using for the kernel as well, and also it's like something presentable here and something that you can understand the flavor of how does the approximation algorithm works here. And you see there's some like way of that's defining on k on log n. I won't optimize now the polynomial. I will do something like if there's a solution of size k, you can find the solution of size k to the 100 log to the 100 n in polynomial time. That's my goal for the next few slides. Okay, so I won't optimize the factors up there. Good. So what's the crucial insight in this approximation algorithm? The crucial insight is that there is a well-structured balance separator. So in a corner graph, so what I mean by balance separator, I want to delete some vertices from the graph so that every connected component drops by a multiplicative factor, or say even drops by half in terms of size, in number of vertices, okay? Of course, in a quarter graph, you won't find the separators being small. I mean, this is like the property of bounded theory of graphs, that there's a constant size separator that breaks the graph in the smaller pieces. Uh, here, you won't find a small one, because I mean, this quarter graph can be a really thick one. I may have got a huge click, a few huge clicks just there, but there's one which is well-structured, in the sense that the key insight is that if this is a yes instance, so there's a solution of size at most k and the quarter graph being the rest of the graph, then you can make a balance separator being this uh, modulator here and a central click in this graph, in this quarter graph. Yeah? In a quarter graph, there's always a click that's sort of upon removal, you, every connected component is at most half of the previous graph. That's a standard thing on 3D compositions. So there's, in this whole graph, there's this modulator and this uh, click up there. So I don't want, I want to get a balance separator which is small, but I want to get a balance separator which is a well structured. It's a click plus some small noise of size and most k. Okay? But how to find it? I mean, I use the structure of the solution to argue that there is one. How to find it? Let's do it in the other direction. Let's find the click first. So the first trick was that, okay, let's, the smallest induced hole was a C4. Okay, if we aim at approximation algorithm, we can just do a greedy like hitting set approximation algorithm. Like as long as there exists a C4, delete all four vertices from the graph. This is like a four approximation algorithm for hitting C4s. Okay, C4s is like 
uh, one of the structures we're going to heat. So let's make a four approximation algorithm for heating C4s. Whenever there's C4, like completely nuke them with all four vertices, heating all four vertices. So now there are no C4s, and the C4-free graphs have got a very cute combinatorial proof that there's only n square. Uh, actually, this is like n plus one, just two maximal clicks. So there's a bounded number, there's polynomial number of maximal clicks in the C4 free graphs. To have super polynomial, in other words, to have super polynomial number of maximal clicks in a graph, you need to have got a lot of C4s up there. So there's, if there are no C4s, we have got a few maximal clicks, and what do you, so you have got only n square options for a maximal click containing this red thing. So guess, using n square options, What's the, maximal, what's the maximal click containing these four things? So this will be this four, maybe a few vertices more, maybe from the modulator. Let's put it as part of my separator. And then the rest of the graph is like this quarter graph shattered into a few pieces and this modulator. And this modulator size at most k. So now we want to find an approximation of this modulator here in the sense that not something that makes the graph quarter, but something that separates the graph in a balanced fashion. And there's actually, this is well understood. If you want to find a balanced separator of size of some size at most k, we can, and there exists one, we can in polynomial time make a root log k approximation. This is something well understood in the literature, for example, for approximating tree width. Uh, yeah. So the punchline is, uh, so the punchline is here that you can find a balanced separator of this graph being a click plus k root log k vertices. And root log k is something very small for our approximation, for the, our goal of how good approximation we want there. Okay, so yeah, so there's a way of finding an approximate version of this balance separator. I mean, instead of k, you will have got k root log k, but that's fine for us. Okay. Where does this k root log k come from? From the modulator? Or? From the approximating the balance separator of small size. So once you delete this ones, then uh, approximating balance separator here. This modulator is like k. If you if there is a balance separator of size k, in polynomial time you can find one of size k root log k. Okay, good. Uh, so now what do we do? Now, so we have got this tool. There's a graph, if this is a yes instance, you can find a separator being a click and a small set of like k, log, k root log k vertices. So let's try to do it iteratively, okay? We have got the entire graph. It's not chordal, so let's uh, so say we, we, when there's chordal we stop. If it's not chordal, let's try to up, up apply our algorithm. So there's a balanced separator, which is a click and a few vertices, and it's split into a few connected components, each of them shrunk by half. Okay? Some of them might already be chordal, so this is chordal, let's keep it on the side, but these two are not chordal, let's keep it again. There's another click separating this one plus a few vertices, and there, maybe this one's turn out to be chordal, we stop here. This one, we hit again. There's a balanced separator, we a click a few vertices. Maybe one part becomes chordal, but the other part is not chordal. So we hit it again, and maybe now everything is chordal, we stop. Okay, so what we do, as long as there's a connected component that's not chordal, we find the balanced separator being a click and at most k root log k vertices, and like delete this balanced separator and recurse. Okay, so the observation here is that the number, uh, the number of iterations we do for this algorithm will be bounded by k log n. Why? Because if you think about every vertex from the solution, it will take part only in log n of this heating things. I mean, if there's like a part which is not chordal, it definitely contains a hole, it definitely contains something from the solution. And whenever we use the approximation algorithm up there, we pay, uh, we, we pay like a click plus size of the solution, root log size of the solution up there. So this vertex gets charged at most log n times to this in this scheme. So we have got like, uh, so we, ha we have got almost this number of iterations and yeah, mm, almost log n, the vertex gets charged at most log n time, so we have got this number of iterations and at every iteration we, re re we deleted k, log, like k root log k vertices and a click. So what do we obtain here? In this picture, the gray part becomes, is a quarter graph, I mean it's a union of quarter graphs, so this is a quarter graph. So there's a quarter graph A, okay, so are connected components being quarter graph. There are these clicks we used and there's like k log n of them. And there's all this mess, all this noise we deleted, like every time we deleted something, and there was k, k root log k vertices we hit and we did it k log n times, so there, this total noise is of this size, which is fine. Remember that we wanted to have a poly, uh, uh, solution of size polynomial in k and log n. So this is like fine. So this thing we can just put in the solution, these dots up there. But what we are left with, we are left with like a, we are left with a quarter graph, a bounded number of clicks. Bounded means k log n, 
k log n, oh, should have put it here. There's k log n clicks up there, and there is some noise, which is, there's some already things we deleted, but this is like of good size. This is like good for our approximation. Okay, good. So now what's the, what's the goal though? Now the point is that now we reduced our problem to something slightly simpler, yeah? The simpler thing is that now what we want to get, we want to take this quarter graph here and do one of these clicks. There can be arbitrary edges between it. Yeah? This was part of the separator and this is like a click. There can be arbitrary edges between this one and this click. And like find a solution here. So we have got a click plus a quarter graph and we want to find, solve quarter vertex addition or approximate quarter vertex addition in this graph, uh, in this graph. So after we do it, we killed a few more vertices and we get a quarter graph here. Then we take the next click, we killed, uh, we killed a few more vertices and get a quarter graph here. We take the next click and get a quarter graph and this solution here. And because there's like k log n clicks, if we get a decent approximation for adding one click, we will get a decent approximation for the entire part. Okay, good. So we have got this picture of like having a graph and a click and we want to solve quarter vertex addition on this graph. Okay. And now we make yet another simplification. Namely, we can think of this graph, like let's hit all the holes that find, the, let's hit all the holes that go through the middle click here. So in this quarter graph, take the click, which is a balance separator, and look only at the holes that pass through this, through this, through this click. Then, I mean, if you do it recursively, like then go for the next quarter, I mean, the point is that there's no hole, I mean, a hole needs to look like this, and it goes into this click, and then goes somewhere for the quarter graph, and it goes back. So then you hit all these holes that pass, pass through this middle click, you forget the middle click, then you take all the hole, then in every component, you again, take the middle click, etc. So you can, after login levels of doing this ones, you end up with your solution. Yeah, so we can focus only on these guys and by paying extra log n in the approximation factor, we can focus only on the holes passing through the middle click here. Okay, yep, so we are having this middle click and we are asking there, so this is really like a matter of like taking one vertex or two from this click and going somewhere in this tree, reaching this click and going back here. Okay, and now it's like, okay, so we have got this picture that we want to have got yeah, this is like what I stated here. We want to hit all the holes passing through the middle click. And the point is that now it's like if the simplest solution I know for the moment is that just to say, okay, let's solve an LP. Let's solve an LP relaxation of this problem. And then the LP, and then like make a multi-cut instance that like asks you to separate every two vertices that are separated by distance at least 0.1 in this LP relaxation. So like, you want to separate every guys that are far away, the, that are far away in this LP relaxation from each other, and every hole in this LP relaxation has got weight at least one. And then what you say is that, okay, this is like your multi-cut instance, and then 10 times your original solution, your LP instance is the solution for the multi-cut instance, and you take some out of the box approximation algorithm for the multi-cut, and you have your solution, which is like polynomial in the weight of the LP relaxation, which is at most K, because you're, you are solving an easier problem that you started with. Okay, so maybe that was slightly fast, but that was like, w once you get to this point, there's like, you take, you phrase it as a multi-cut problem and you just take some out of the box approximation going for multi-cut. Uh, the approximation, like the subsequent paper or the other paper up there in series, like made mo uh, one of the contributions up there is like making this phase slightly, I mean, not slightly, but much more, uh, uh, I mean, the further improvements also from this paper to the approximation algorithms came from also from un better understanding this phase and doing it more smart way than just saying it's multi-cut and just use some out of the box things for multi-cut. Okay, so that was about approximating uh, quarter vertex addition. Uh, yeah, so I hope I showed you the intuition how to approximate it. Uh, it turned out that this idea of like having a balanced separator, which is like somehow well structured, not necessarily small, but well structured and recursing on it, turns out to be quite useful in many other problems. So that's something I want to send you home with this message. And now I want to s go to Erdos Poja property and discuss the Erdos Poja property up there. So the, Poja, the name Erdos Poja came from a classic result of Erdos and Poja that proved that if you don't have k vertex joint cycles in an undirected graph, then you have a feedback vertex set of size k log k. And this is tight. I mean, there's like, um, mm, there are examples when this is tight. Okay. And, uh, uh, and the, starting from this result, there's a 
a lot of big bunch of papers proving this type of duality theorems like heating versus packing numbers for various different types of cycles and whatever including for example directed cycles okay but this function changes over time depending on the structure up there and uh, the paper recently was that it also holds for holes so if you have got a uh, graph, there's either a large packing of holes, more than k holes, the vertex is joint, or you can actually find a heating set, a solution of size k squared log k, and as, uh, uh, as far as the question, yes, it's algorithmic. You can like find one or the other and put it over time. Okay, so now I want to, I don't want to go into details of this proof, no, I want to show you a baby version coming from our paper, I mean, uh, I mean, a special, I mean, it's not special, it's like a corner case. It's not a corner case, really. I mean, like one of the versions when the graph is really like there's a one vertex plus a corridor graph. Yeah, so if you have a one vertex and the corridor graphs, all holes need to pass through this vertex. I mean, and this vertex is a solution of size one. Yeah, so asking for the standard elder project doesn't make sense. What I want to ask, I want to ask, okay, what's this? Well, how does the relate the size of the largest like flower packing? I want to ask at, ask for packing of holes that are disjoint except for this vertex because they need to contain this vertex, and I want to compare it with the heating set that doesn't heat this vertex. This vertex is undeletable and has got like infinite capacity for e having holes. So now I want to ask what's the packing? Uh, was is there any packing difference between like packing holes? with disjoint holes passing through this vertex versus hitting all these holes without hitting this particular vertex. Okay, and they want to show, I want to argue or sketch a proof that there's actually like a, a factor of 12, one for another. So even not k log k, but there's a constant gap between them. Okay, and this would give you a flavor of how do you like think of them, okay? So this is the statement that you either have got k, a flower of size more than k or you can hit 12k vertices so that you won't really, so that you kill all the holes passing through this vertex. And, mm, well, this is the picture. And uh, yeah, this is the picture of the color graph and the vertex. And so the, what the proof is like, the proof works as follows. We say that let's compute the packing by a two, two radius to local search. What do I mean by radius to local search? Well, I maintain some packing, starting from an empty packing, and then as long as I can greedily add a hole to this packing, keeping it vertex is joint except for V, then I increase it. But also I try to remove one hole and add two more. You need to work a bit to understand that this is polynomial time operation, but that's fine. So you, I'm trying not to only greedily add, but also try whether I can hide one from the packing and add two more instead of it. And I also want a small minimality condition saying that if there's a, I, I, want, I want as short a hole as possible, but short hole means in terms of the click tree. So I fix some click tree of the, uh, of the graph on top, and I look at for every hole, how many bugs I need to go around to draw this, to go for this hole for the click tree, and if I can remove a hole and put another hole that is shorter in terms of how many minimal clicks it needs to, maximum clicks it needs to visit, then I do it. It will be useful later on. So this is my local search, and now, uh, yeah, this is my local search, and so I have got my packing, say this here I draw only packing of size one, if you draw too many holes in the picture it becomes too messy, so I draw only one hole, and now I want to define a packing and argue that this is a, good, a, a heating set, and I want to argue that this is a good heating set up there, okay? So for every hole I hit, I want to hit the two neighbors of V. This is in my solution, okay? So I hit essentially all the neighbors of V that are used in the packing, but I need to pack something more. I mean, there are sometimes some neighbors of V that were not used in the packing. So I wrote this click tree somewhere. Say I wrote this click tree in this bag in the middle here. So this is rooted here. So I go here from here and I go up the click tree up to the first adhesion that's completely packed with the, with the heating. So I go up to the click tree, up to the first adhesion that's completely used by the, by the packing, and I hit this entire adhesion. Okay, so I go up to the place when everything is uh, in the packing, and I hit everything there, the adhesion, okay? And now, it's relatively easy to argue that this is a good uh, solution, okay? Because whenever there would be a hole, the hole needs to use two unused neighbors of V that are, uh, two unused neighbors of V that are, uh, uh, that are not in the packing. So you go up the click tree until they meet, and if there was no fully packed adhesion on the way there, you could actually construct a hole you may, may have added to your packing beforehand. 
So there needs to be some stuff that adhesion, so this actually heats. And this minimality condition we used there earlier ensured that this is actually quite, uh, that this is quite small. So you hit a constant number of vertices per every hole in your packing. Okay, because you pack, you hit all the neighbors of V, but the point is that one hole cannot have got too many stuffed adhesions in between that you used, because if there's like, let me draw, I didn't draw a picture of that one, but let me draw a picture here. If there's like a click tray looking like this, and there's a hole from the packing that goes up to here and goes back, and you hit a lot of adhesions between there. Well, why you hit these adhesions? Because there was a neighbor of V up here, for, for which this was the first adhesion on the way up. There was a neighbor up here, for which this was the first adhesion on the way up, etc. And in this manner, there was this minimality condition. So because this was this is an unused, uh, this is actually here. This is an unused neighbor, and these are clicks. You could actually have shortened this this uh, this hole up here. That's the intuition. Yeah? Instead of having this long hole in your packing, you may have used this unused endpoint and shortened this and shortened this hole here, and have a smaller and the local search step would do it. So that's like the intuition why you have got only a constant number of guys hidden there. Of course, I swept a lot of things under the rug here, and uh, I mean, there's like I never now used the fact that there's, this is reduced to local search, you need it at some moment, etc. But yeah, but that was the, the intuition how you get there. So now let me go to the punchline. The punchline is that you get this theorem and now you can use it for the following fashion. Let's say that there's like, a, you found a modulator, you used the approximation algorithm to find the modulator up there. So you found the solution, approximate solution, which is like of size polynomial in k log n, but log n is roughly the same as k because otherwise you could have used the algorithm of uh, Ixin and Daniel. So this is fine. And now let's look, there's a corner graph and there's this modulator. Let's pick vertices from the modulator one by one and put them back to the corner graph. This won't be a corner graph any longer unless, I mean, I mean, this usually won't be a corner graph any longer, but there is like either you find k plus one, but using this theorem, either you find k plus one disjoint holes passing through this vertex, and that proves that this vertex needs to be a part of your solution. Just greedily delete him, hide him, and restart the algorithm. Or you have got this heating set of size 12k. And now let's union all these heating sets over all choices from M. This is something of size 12k times M. So this is like polynomial in K if you started with something polynomial in K. But has got this property that every hole is hit twice. Okay, it's not only hit from the original modulator, I mean, every hole that uses every, but also every hole that was hit only by one vertex from the modulator, it's hit again by this 12k vertices from XV. Okay, and this is something like red, this is something which was called like C redundant modulator or two redundant modulator, and this is something that we found very very useful, and all this paper found very very useful in this canalization. That you, I mean, in many canalization you start with approximate solution, then build some structure on the approximate solution, but it makes a lot of sense always, or helps a lot to actually have this. Uh, it's modulator redundant, like blow up its size by some polynomial factor, but have this property that, for example, it hits every obstruction a few times or in a special way or something like that. May yeah, so this is like an example that this theorem allows you to construct like two redundant modulator, and we found it very useful in the core direct solution kernel. Okay, let me wrap up my part. So this was like the result I briefly skimmed and gave you some insight into how do you approach them or what tools do you use there. And yeah, so I talked, uh, I mentioned the FPT algorithm, I mentioned polynomial kernel, I mostly, I gave you how to make a poly op, poly log n approximation. I discussed something from the Erdos project and give you a glimpse how it looks up there. And I want to conclude with mentioning an open problem. Like, I mean, we here there's the case where log k, but the only lower bound here is the example for simple cycles that you need k log k. I mean, hitting says sometimes of size k log k to hit all the cycles, whether, and even if there's no packing of size more than k. And closing the gap between k square log k and k log k, I think it's an interesting open problem, but maybe quite challenging. Okay, so thank you here. And I want to give floor to Pranabendu. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Just a quick remark, the k square, like the k log square m is actually k log square k. Oh, I was just copying from the papers, okay. Because you can run the kernel first. 
And the kernel is approximation to the. Okay, I didn't notice it all. Okay, so I, you could collapse these two lines to k log square n, log square k. Thank you.